The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The Pharisees and the scribes sit in Moses' chair. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do. For they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others. For they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and at the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we as church celebrate the Queenship of Mary. The special liturgical feast was proclaimed by Pope Pius XII on October 11th, 1954, through his encyclical letter, Acele Reginam. But Mary's title as Queen of Heaven and Earth is a great scandal to many non-Catholic Christians and thus a source of disagreement in ecumenical dialogue. Even ordinary Catholics wonder why Mary's statues and paintings should have a royal crown, while after all, she was an ordinary village mother in her simple life at Nazareth. Here is the biblical argument supporting her queenship. Since sacred scripture presents Jesus Christ as king, his mother Mary is the queen mother. In most of the messianic prophecies given in the Old Testament books of Samuel, Micah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Daniel, Christ the Messiah is represented as a king. And the Gospels of Luke, Matthew, and John do the same. So, for example, when Pilate asked the question in the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verse 37, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus made this assertion. You say that I am a king, and then went on to say, For this I was born and came into this world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Gospel scenes of the Last Judgment present Christ the King coming in his heavenly glory to judge us. It's interesting to note that in the monarchy of King David, as well as others in ancient kingdoms of the Near East, the mother of the ruling king held an important office in the royal court and played a key part in the process of dynastic succession. In fact, the king's mother ruled as queen, not his wife or his wives. The prophet Jeremiah tells how the queen mother possessed a throne and a crown, symbolic of her position of authority in the kingdom. Probably the clearest example of the queen mother's role is that of Bathsheba, the wife of David and the mother of Solomon. A few Old Testament prophecies incorporate the Queen Mother tradition when telling of the future Messiah. And finally, 
Mary's queenship can be seen in the great vision described in the book of Revelation, and I quote, And a great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and she cried out in her pangs of birth, in anguish for delivery, end of quote. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, portrays Mary as the Queen Mother in the Kingdom of God, sharing in her son's rule over the cosmos. Understanding Mary as the Queen Mother explains her important intercessory role in Christian life. Just like the Queen Mother of the Davidic Kingdom, Mary serves as our advocate between before her son Jesus, the King of the universe. Hence, we should approach our Queen Mother with confidence, knowing that she carries our petitions to her royal son and that he responds to her as Solomon did to Bathsheba. We're told, he said, I will never refuse you. There is also an interfaith dimension to the role of Mary especially in the, Muslim, in the Muslim world. Mary is mentioned with reverence in the Koran. When Roman Catholics revere Mary, they capture a glimpse of God's dream, God's vision, vis-a-vis -vis the role of women in general in human society. The prayer, Salve Regina, is perfect for today. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. In short, as this prayer illustrates, Mary's role is properly portrayed in writings, art, and song whenever and wherever she points to Jesus Christ. We hold up to our loving God some of the prayers and intentions we'd like to remember in today's Eucharist. That the church may be blessed as she continues to serve the needs of the poor and dispossessed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the people of the world may grow in generosity of heart and in their willingness to help others who are less fortunate, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those whose hearts are filled with grief may find comfort in God's unending love for them and in the consolation of family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord that each of us may follow the example of our Blessed Mother and lead lives that are firm in faith and tender in love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the intentions of all those who have supported this important national ministry the daily Mass. For them, we pray to the Lord. God, we ask that you hear and answer our petitions offered in faith, for we make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord.